Spookers! This is a subclass focused on dishing out damaging spells more than any other wizard. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where I didn't ask how big the room was, I said I cast Fireball! Savant feature, second level, the golden time you must spend to copy an evocation spell into your spellbook is halved. I'm an evoker, I'm gonna grab Fireball anyways. I'm gonna grab the evocation spells. Ah, oh, I mean, the good ones at least. Well, anyways, now for the unexpected reason why evokers get to do so much damage. Yup, it's a level two feature. It's called Sculpt Spells. You can create pockets of relative safety within the effects of your evocation spells. When you cast an evocation spell that affects other creatures that you can see, you can choose a number of them equal to one plus the spell's level. The chosen creatures automatically succeed on their saving throws against the spell. And they take no damage if they would normally take half damage on a successful save. That doesn't even do damage! Actual noob! Packed tactics! You're calling me that too? It's pack! Pack, pack, pack! I've made no pact whatsoever, at least not publicly. Also, yeah, nothing in that feature does damage directly, but after my examples, you'll get why I count it as adding a lot of damage. I'm gonna go a bit ahead in levels to show why this is so good. Let's look at this. It is a really good situation for an evocation wizard with fireball. This is a very reasonable amount of enemies, and most parties probably have someone in melee in this situation. Here, I basically put in two frontliners. Now, most people with fireball, even other wizards, cannot effectively use the spell in a situation like this. Meanwhile, you do about 100 damage. Yeah! Fireball on average does 28 damage on a failed save, and 40 14 otherwise. That means it does about 20 per target when accounting for chance of failure. So 5 times 20 is 100. That's correct. Very good job, Gator. Here is another situation. I would say Fireball is valid for any caster here. But an Evoker gets to hit 5 more creatures. So an additional 100 damage. Obviously, not all situations will be like the ones shown here. This was just white room. However, in general, evocation wizards get to use blast spells in more situations where the damage is good. The same concept applies to something like Shatter, Vitriolic Sphere, and Sickening Radiance, and so on. You know what else is good for blasting? Today's video is sponsored by Master Screen. It's a free campaign manager. You could try it right now! With this tool, you can create interactive and detailed maps. It also comes with a 3D battle map maker. It's useful for blast spells and it helps immensely with complex terrain. Even the fireball comes in 3D. And that's one of the fantastic things about Master Screen. There seems to be no delay or loading for things. It's just instant from what I can see. Even downloading from the market is just instant. This campaign manager runs on entries. You can create templates for any system you want. It also comes with full markdown support and flashy item effects that sparkle. This is an app for wizards. The marketplace comes with free adventures and free templates for other systems as well. Look, Master Screen can help you become the Pokemon Master as well. <gasps> oh my god! This app even works offline, so you can work anytime you want. This is available on computers, Macs, phones, and tablets. And let me remind you, it's completely free, so you might as well check it out. Link in the description and comments. Back to the video. Later on, you get a feature that adds damage a bit more directly. Potent Cantrip. Starting at 6th level, when a creature succeeds on a saving throw against your cantrip, the creature takes half the cantrip's damage, if any, but suffers no additional effect from the cantrip. This is not that good when you compare it to our fantastic feature at level 2. But it adds a bit of damage. I wouldn't recommend you build around this, by the way. If we assume a creature with plus 3 bonus to intelligence, 
intelligent saving throws and we have a DC of 14. Mind Sliver has a 50-50 chance of failure. It goes from doing 3.5 DPR at this level to 5.25 DPR. That is almost a plus 2 DPR increase. But even for something like Toll the Dead, it won't be that much of a DPR increase either. I expect like a plus 3 DPR increase with Toll the Dead. But you know, we'll gladly take it. It's not a bad feature. At level 10, we get Empowered Evocation, which is a bit cooler. Beginning at 10th level, you can add your Intelligence modifier to one damage roll of any Wizard Evocation spell you cast. If we assume 50% chance of failure again, this will add about 4.5 to 6 damage to your your fireball damage per target, which is not bad. But the real kicker here is how it interacts with magic missile. It's fantastic. People build for this. For more details, check out my video on Magic Missile or Tabletop Build's article on the Hexvoker, which is a fantastic build which goes into a lot of detail about the subclass as well. Magic Missile goes Absolutely, Gator, it does. Last but not least, Over Channel. Starting at 14th level, you can increase the power of your simpler spells. When you cast a wizard spell of 1st through 5th level that deals damage, you can deal maximum damage with that spell. The first time you do so, you suffer no adverse effects. If you use this feature again before you finish a long rest, you take 2d12 necrotic damage for each level of the spell immediately after you cast it. Each time you use this feature again before you finish a long rest, the necrotic damage per spell increases by 1d12. This damage ignores resistance and immunity. Look at that, we get even better at blasting. I wouldn't suggest that you use this more than once because it will probably not be worth it. This feature works best if you use it with spells that deal damage over time, as this buff applies to every single one of its damage instances. Sick Sickening Radiance is the spell you cast with this. You're gonna have a lot of fun. Damage solves in Dungeons and Dragons, and this is one of the kings of blasting. It's very straightforward. You're going to have a good time with this. Then at tier 3, you can potentially become the best single target damage dealer in the entire game. Now, of course, be warned, you might drain your resources quickly with all the fireball, but ah, if you're doing hundreds of collective damage per fireball, you're most likely contributing more than anyone in the whole party. Just whatever you do, do not fireball web or hypnotic pattern guys, that's annoying. If the other caster tells you to fireball, then it's fine. Also, you can get those shutdown spells yourself. You don't always have to blast, but I do recommend you blast. It's why you're playing an evoker. But sometimes, you know, you should cast Wall of Force. I know that's very obvious, you know? You, obviously, you don't upcast Fireball to 9th level, for example. That's just stupid. One last thing. If you play in games where it's common to have just one or two encounter days, then I don't think you should hold back on blasting. Fireball solves everything. If you run out, you shatter, you know? A very wise and powerful wizard once said, Fireball wins again. Again, suck my cobalt barbarian. End of video. Remember to check out Master Screen. It's completely free. Give it a shot. Master Screen hopes to earn your support, as I hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.